I'm Greg Brown for Newsmax TV Money. We're on the line with former economic advisor to President Clinton, Jeffrey Frankel. Today he's a Harvard professor and he serves on the committee of the National Bureau of Economic Research that determines when the U.S. economy has or has not seen a recession. Welcome, sir. Thank you. I know you have to deal with a committee on this, but personally, where do you fall now on the recession debate? Are we in one? Will, we, will it be bad? Well, I mean, it's two separate questions. Are, are we in a recession? Uh, if so, when did it start, or will we go into one? And second, how, how bad would it be? Um, it's, uh, on the first one, you know, it's just really hard to say. I mean, uh, as uh, is often the case, different indicators point different directions. One of the most important indicators is employment, and if you went by the, that, then a recession clearly started around the December because uh, jobs have just been going down, down, down. But um, GDP is uh, one of the other, is, is, is the other equally important indicator. There are a lot of indicators, but those are the two most important. And the, the uh, national output, the, the growth rate, um, has basically been positive. Uh, some people think that there's the rule of thumb, a definition of a recession is two negative quarters of GDP. Um, well, it's, it, 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 it isn't exactly. It's, uh, the uh, NBR Business Cycle Dating Committee gets to say what a recession is or isn't, but, uh, but the GDP is, 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 is probably the most important single statistic to look at. Mm. Um, now, uh, uh, up until a few weeks ago, the answer was we haven't even had one negative quarter of GDP, let alone two. But uh, there was a revision, not noticed that much, in uh, the figures for the last quarter of 2007, which made it negative. So it, it's possible that in the end that we'll say that there was a recession and it started something like December. But but right now, I, I you know, all I can say is 50-50 uh, odds or maybe a, a little greater. Now, if we do go into recession, I think it could be quite serious. And, and obviously, there's all kinds of very serious negative impacts across the country already. Mm. The Fed and the Treasury, it seems, are either making a hash of things or they have saved the economy from something much worse. What's your take? Well, I think it's just a very difficult situation. I think there were a lot of very serious policy mistakes before, and then in part we're paying the price for that now. But I don't, uh, I wouldn't be especially critical um, uh, of either the Treasury or certainly the, the Fed in their behavior over the last year. It's, I think they've dealt with the crisis, financial crisis, first of all, but also the, the uh, before that in the economy about as well as uh, could be. A, could, could be expected. Uh, there's some people who think that uh, they haven't done enough because, after all, this, you have this very unusual uh, uh, freezing up of uh, liquidity in the financial markets that's going on a year from now. So some people think the Fed should be easier, or that the that the rest of the government should be compensating in terms of the effects on the on the, on the housing industry uh, by stepping in in various ways. And then you have other people pointing out that but look, inflation is high and commodity prices are high, and I, it's not an easy call. I think they've probably done it about right, but I think we're paying the price in part for very serious policy mistakes that were made earlier. What's your position on the decoupling debate, the idea that the U.S. and perhaps Europe can slow down, but it might not need a, mean a world recession, as has been the case in the past? Well, I'm not sure anybody ever really thought that uh, the rest of the world would be immune from uh, the U.S. slowdown. Of course, it has a major impact on, on the rest of the world. Um, but uh, the, the U.S. is no longer as large a share of the world economy as it uh, used to be, and certainly if you ask about creating new uh, output and new jobs and growth, uh, the, the, the big growth has been coming from, from elsewhere, especially places like China and India. And um, six months ago, it looked like that, that was going to continue and be an independent source of growth, even if the U.S. did go into recession. Uh, more recently, very recently, last week or two, there have been signals that uh, the rest of the world, after all, uh, perhaps is going to uh, slow down or is already slowing down um, as much as uh, as we are. So I think the decoupling hypothesis has pretty much gone out the window. Mm. Sovereign wealth funds, which is to say rich governments, rich foreign governments, have been busy propping up Wall Street. Are they the only deep pockets left in the world, or are others just holding back? Well, that's a, that's a good question. Um, uh, there's there's a lot of uh, deep pockets in the world, and of course, uh, but in addition to the sovereign wealth funds, you have uh, foreign central banks uh, buying up very large quantities of U.S. Treasury bills as part of their foreign exchange reserves, uh, and uh, that's been going on re really throughout this decade. So you have China now, for example, being by far the world's largest holder of foreign exchange reserves, um, something like uh, 1.8 trillion, which is just you know, it was unthinkable um, a, few, a, few, a few years ago, and uh, various other sources of capital. So we are very dependent on foreign capital, and the sovereign wealth funds are just one part of that. 
um, you know, the optimistic thing would be to think that we can continue to finance our uh, deficits, uh, and the path for the for the for the for future path for the budget deficit is really quite uh, bleak. Um, so the optimistic thing would be to think we can continue to to fork to to fund those deficits um, in large part by borrowing abroad uh, at the same rate as in the past. Um, uh, it's not really a question of whether we can come up with new sources of money. The question is whether the the, the the, the, the central banks and the sovereign wealth funds and the other foreign investors who've been, you know, sort of bailing us out all along get tired of doing that and start pulling back. Hmm. Let's talk briefly about the dollar. The euro has been called recently overvalued. Do you agree? Well, the euro is just very strong. I mean, it's in, it's appreciated, uh, gone up in value. Uh, uh, you know, was, I don't know, fifty percent, a huge amount since two thousand and two. Um, remarkable movement. Now, it was undervalued in 2002. I agree it's overvalued now. I mean, I've, I spent a little time in Europe this summer. I'm sure a lot of your, your audience has, and it's, or some of your audience has, and the prices are just very, very high. Um, so, yeah, so I agree it's overvalued. On the other hand, uh, we still have this large trade deficit, and even though it's improved a bit uh, recently, uh, we may be nearing the end of that. And um, so, against other currencies, the dollar uh, perhaps should, should come down more. But 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 it, it, it's already come down quite a bit. And and I agree that vis-a-vis the euro, um, it's hard to see uh, uh, much further uh, downward movement in the dollar. It's easy to presume that a strong dollar fixes a lot of our problems. Is that too simplistic of you? Well, yeah, sure. I mean, any movement in the exchange rate for any country has very major pluses and minuses, and that applies uh, to the U.S. Uh, today. Um, the uh, the uh, depreciation of the dollar that we've had uh, over the last few years has been a godsend in the sense that it's helped stimulate uh, exports a lot, and 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 the export engine has been the sole engine that's been keeping the economy growing. The U.S. before about going into recession, uh, we're like an airplane, and the other ed- traditional engines have conked out the, inv- the investment engine and the and the consumption engine and the government spending engine, and we got a we got a temporary boost from the, the tax rebates, but that's gonna that's gonna end soon. And so it's been the export engine that's been the sole engine that's been kept the airplane from, uh, you know, uh, completely crashing. Uh, and uh, that's in large part been due to the the, uh, the, the weak dollar t- together with continued strong growth in the rest of the world. So the weak dollar has its uh, advantages, but it also has its disadvantages, uh, which we're beginning to see uh, now, namely uh, upward pressure on inflation, especially commodity prices like uh, oil and other mineral and agricultural products, and, um, and, 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 and interest rates. So, um, it, you know, it's... it's uh, it's, it's pros and cons, pluses and minuses. We've been on the line with former Clinton advisor Jeff Frankel. Th- thanks so much for your time today. My pleasure. I'm Greg Brown for Newsmax TV Money.